Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're tackling uh, a big one for PC gamers. Can Linux really truly compete with Windows 11, you know, as the go-to for high-performance gaming? Yeah, it's interesting. We're kind of past the point of asking if Linux can run games. Now it's really about how well. And we're looking today at three specific uh, optimized gaming distributions, CatchOS, Nobara, and Bazite, comparing them against Windows 11. Okay, so performance, the philosophy behind them, stability. The whole package. Exactly. And the data, well, it shows some pretty clear trade-offs you'll want to know about if you're thinking of making a switch. So let's start with performance. Windows 11 is kind of our baseline, right? Let's call it 100%. Right. And generally, these Linux distros, uh, often running games through the Proton compatibility layer, they land somewhere between, say, 84% and maybe 96.5% of that Windows performance. It varies. Okay, 84 to 96.5. That's a decent spread. What causes that variation? Well, a huge factor is the hardware specifically your graphics card, there's a pretty significant GPU divide. Uh, the classic NVIDIA versus AMD battle, even on Linux. Pretty much. So with NVIDIA cards, especially high-end ones, like um, the data we saw for an RTX 5080, the performance gap is wider. Wider how? Usually hovering around 84% to 86% of the Windows performance in those tests. Hmm. 84 to 86%. That feels like a noticeable hit if you've shelled out for premium hardware. Is that mainly down to the proprietary drivers? That's definitely a big part of it, yeah. yeah. The proprietary driver situation is still, well, a situation. But it's not the whole picture. Okay. Because if you switch over to AMD hardware, like uh, some tests used are Radeon RX 6600, Linux gets really competitive. More competitive than 96%, like matching Windows. Sometimes even beating it. Mm -hmm. In certain titles, like Horizon Zero Dawn in some tests, Linux actually pulled ahead in average frame rates. Wow, okay. And maybe even more importantly with AMD, Linux often delivers better 1% low frame times. Uh, the smoothness factor. Less stuttering. Exactly. So the game just feels smoother, more consistent, even if the absolute max FPS isn't always higher than Windows. That's a big deal for actual gameplay. Gotcha. Okay, so beyond raw numbers, this is where it gets really interesting for me. The philosophy. These three distros, Catchy OS, Nobara, Bazite, they're not just Arch or Fedora with some gaming stuff pre-installed, are they? They have different goals. Totally different goals. Let's start with Catchy OS. That one's clearly aimed at the performance chaser, the tinkerer. Right. The Arch pace gives that away a bit. Bleeding edge? Very much so. It's focused on raw speed. They use aggressive compiler optimizations, things like LTO, Bolt, stuff designed to squeeze every last drop of performance out, especially from the CPU. So highest potential frame rates, maybe? That's the goal. But the trade-off is you kind of have to be your own pilot, engineer, and mechanic. You need to be comfortable tweaking things. Okay, contrast that with Nobara. That sounds more user-friendly. Definitely. Nobara is based on Fedora, and it's maintained by Glorious Eggroll, the person behind Proton GE. So huge credibility there in the gaming space. Huh. Its whole philosophy is just works, especially for gamers coming over from Windows. It includes proprietary drivers, like for NVIDIA, right out of the box, lots of gaming tools pre-installed. It tries to be convenient. So the most balanced, maybe. Easiest transition. Probably, yeah. For general gaming, maybe even streaming, it's designed to be smooth sailing. And then there's Bezite. This one sounds different again. Console-like. Yeah. Immutable. Right. But Zayt is built on Vedora Silver Blue or Kinoit, which are immutable systems. Think Steam OS on the Steam Deck. Meaning the core system is locked down, more stable. Exactly. It's incredibly stable and robust by design. The focus is on a polished, reliable, almost console-like experience. Great for controller-first setups like Touch Gaming. It also integrates things like HDR, VR support really well and leans heavily on flat packs for apps. Okay, that immutable approach sounds super stable. Which brings up the next point. Long-term reliability. Nobara sounds great for convenience, but... Is it stable? Well, that's the tricky part. Anecdotally, some users report instability with Nobara, despite the goal of being easy. Oh, like what kind of issues? Updates occasionally breaking things, sometimes issues specifically with the KDE Plasma desktop version, or needing to manually manage kernel updates to avoid problems. So the convenience sometimes comes at a cost of, well, fragility for some. Huh. And yet... You mentioned Catchy OS, which mm -hmm. is Arch-based, a rolling release. Mm. Normally, you'd expect that to be less stable. Right. It's kind of counterintuitive. But we hear from users who actually switched from Nobara to Catchy OS because they found Catchy OS more stable in practice. That is surprising. Maybe their quality control on updates is just really tight. It seems that way. They seem to manage their kernel and patching process very carefully. 
But uh, if you want the absolute maximum, like rock solid reliability. Pause in sight because of the immutable system. Exactly. That immutable design makes it incredibly dependable. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice some ease of customization. Sure, you can't just tinker with core system files easily, but for robustness, it's hard to beat. Okay, so wrapping this up, if you're listening and trying to decide which OS path to take, what's the bottom line? It really boils down entirely to your priorities. What do you care about most? If it's raw, customizable speed and you enjoy tinkering, getting under the hood, Catchy OS probably offers the highest performance ceiling. Right. If you just want it to work, maximum convenience, easiest possible transition from Windows, especially with NVIDIA, no bar is built for that. Just be aware of the potential stability bumps. Okay. But if you want something incredibly stable, dependable, maybe for a living room PC or a console-like setup, Badgesite's immutable nature makes it pretty unbeatable for that rock-solid feel. So here's the final thought then. If Linux these days is giving you, say, 85% to 95% of the performance you'd get on Windows, but it potentially gets rid of all the, let's call it Windows annoyances, force updates, random background stuff, telemetry, lack of control, mm -hmm. is losing that maybe 5 15% performance actually a worthwhile trade-off to gain that system control and potentially peace of mind? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It really makes you think about what performance truly means beyond just the highest frame number. Something definitely to mull over.